Let's finish off the third declension nouns today. Uh, we're going to look at stems that end in diphthongs, and those diphthongs are going to be epsilon upsilon, alpha upsilon, or omicron upsilon, and a few irregulars, although uh, I will admit that these irregulars aren't all that irregular, uh, they just sort of uh, appear that way. So let's, uh, let's, without any further ado, let's move on. We're going to look first at uh, stems in epsilon upsilon, or nominatives in eus. And the reason I make this distinction is that you actually don't see the epsilon upsilon in very many cases. Uh, more often we see it, uh, we just see the epsilon. So, ho basileus, and then this means king. Uh, tu basileos, here, notice we've got that quantitative metathesis, just like we did in polis. Uh, tu basileos. To basilei, right? So we've got a contraction there. Ton basilea, right? Again, uh, our, our endings that we've been expecting, and then the vocative o basileu. So here's where we see the stem, right? In our vocative, this is just the stem. That's how we know the stem is actually eus and not just an epsilon with something weird happening in the nominative. Uh, so. Basileus, basileos, basile, basilea, basileu. Uh, and all nouns that end in eus are going to decline like this. Hoi basileis, or basileis, a contraction here. Uh, and this contraction, the, the ace is a later version, uh, but you'll see both. Ton basileon, tois basileusin, there's our stem with sin. Okay, so we see the stem in the vocative, in the dative plural. Tus basileas, and then o basileis, basileis, our vocative the same as the nominative. So places to, uh, to note, uh, when you see this eus, we're going to see it in the nominative singular, the vocative singular, and the dative plural. All other situations, we're going to see the epsilon stem. We're going to get our quantitative metathesis here, uh, but otherwise we're just going to see the stem, and we're going to get a contraction in the nominative plural, but not in the accusative plural. Right, those are a lot of things to keep in, in mind. Uh, you're probably best off just memorizing this paradigm of Basileus. Moving on, and I'm going to group these together, the stems that end in us or aus. Uh, the, the, so these two diphthongs. Uh, we'll start with hobus meaning cow or ox. Hobus to boos to boi, and it's important to notice that these are actually two syllables, boi. Uh, ton boon, all right, right there we see a distinction. We've got our stem and the accusative in nu, right, like polis. So we see the, the us, the u stem in the nominative and accusative singular, but otherwise we see Omicron, and then in the vocative, bu, we get the stem. Now moving on to the plural, boes, right, no contraction, ton boon, tus busin, there's our stem, plus the sin, tus bus, we do get a contraction there, and o boes. Uh, now the way to distinguish between Hobus and tusbus is going to be, of course, either the uh, context or our articles. So, in nouns that end in us, we're going to see that stem in the nominative and accusative singular, as well as the vocative singular, and the dative, uh, and accusative plural, although here we really do have something like a, a contraction going on. All the others are just going to have the omicron stem. So, hobus, tuboos, uh, to boi, ton boon, o bu, ho boes, ton boon, tus busin, tus bus, o boes. Now you said, remember I said that these are, are very closely related. We'll look at, take a look at, at a stem in ow. Hey grouse, old woman. Hey grouse. Tes graos. So the difference here between boos and graus, I've, I've put bus over here on the left for you to, to compare, is that instead of the omicron 
showing up in the stem, we're going to have the alpha. So like our stem here is us instead of aus, alpha instead of omicron. Graos, grai, same thing here, this is two syllables. Graun, right, the new stem, so we get our alpha upsilon uh, plus our ending of nu. And o grau, there's our stem. So in the singular, you'll see that bus and graus actually decline identically. The difference is going to be whether it's an omicron or an alpha. So we have our stem plus sigma, stem plus sigma. Omicron, alpha, omicron, alpha, stem plus nu, stem plus nu, and stem, stem. In the plural, same thing, graes, uh, and the reason this is circumflex is that this is a long alpha. Graon, tas grausin, stem plus sin, tas graus, stem plus the sigma, just like we had stem plus the sigma, and then graes. So those nouns that end in us or aus actually decline uh, identically. Now there is one weird exception to nouns like graus, and that's the noun naus. And naus, ship, its stem is going to bounce around a bit. Uh, we're going to see the stem look like alpha upsilon. It's going to look like an epsilon and it's going to look like an eta. So let's take a look at this and just memorize nouns. Uh, it's, it's worth memorizing. Ships are, play a major role in Greek culture uh, and Greek literature. You're going to see them everywhere. So, hey nous, tes neos. Right, we get our quantitative metathesis. Uh, so this is like polis with our stem and epsilon, os. Te nei, two syllables. Stem and eta, and tain noun, right, just like grouse, nous, noun, ground, and now the vocative is just the stem. In the plural, neas, we get our eta uh, stem, but in the genitive, it goes back to the epsilon, neon, nousin, we get our full stem, alpha upsilon and then the accusative, nous, and the uh, vocative, the same as the nominative, neas. So memorize nous, realize it's irregular, uh, but the endings are not horribly irregular. These are endings that you've come to expect, provided you recognize the uh, quantitative metathesis there, and that this is the, uh, the type of noun that uses nu instead of alpha in the accusative singular. Now, there are a few other nouns that Shelmerdine includes in her chapter on irregular third declension nouns. Uh, the most important one that you should recognize is Zdeus, Zeus. And what's irregular about him is that he's only Zdeus in the nominative and the vocative. So that Zeta only shows up in these two situations. In all other cases, in the, in the three other oblique cases, it's going to, the stem will be D. So, dios, de, dia. Regular endings, os, e, a. Nothing strange there. And Zeus, of course, only shows up in the singular. The other nouns that she includes are gune, gunaikos, woman. And the only real irregular thing here is that the nominative is very different from the, uh, the stem, gunaik. Uh, it declines regularly once you recognize that this is uh, a, a stem that ends in kappa. So you have a dative plural gunaixin. And the other irregular thing is we're going to have the uh, vocative singular is o gunai. So once you recognize that, you say, ah, okay, I'm, I'm ready to move on with woman or wife. Uh, but it really isn't that irregular. And the other irregular one that's included is tohudor, tohudatos, water. And this is actually only irregular because of this rho. Uh, your stem, so it's irregular in the nominative and accusative singular, both tohudor, it's neuter, uh, but otherwise your stem, hudat, uh, so hudatos, hudati, hudor, plural, hudata, hudaton, hudasin, hudata, 
Uh, nothing irregular about that. It's a stem that ends in tau.